Last Farewell is a game made by the YouTuber Bikini Body along with his friends. I've been watching Bikini Body for a long time and I thought the idea behind the game was pretty interesting so I decided to give it a shot. Uh, the reviews for the game gave mixed results actually and so that just made me even more curious. Some reviews are really positive and some reviews say uh, they can't stomach more than 3 hours of it or even .2 hours. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I wanted to give the best review possible, and I feel like I can now that I've uh, I've played four hours of it. I feel like I've seen everything the game has to offer. I've gotten past uh, ten nights, so um, yeah, I, I feel like I have a good understanding of the game's mechanics, uh, the idea behind the game, the core game loop, and so uh, I would like to review everything properly, because <laughs> I don't think even uh, the positive reviews on Steam really review the game properly. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Enjoy! So, what is Last Farewell? Last Farewell is a 1-4 to four player cooperative uh, wave survival game uh, where you go out and get resources, bring them home before night, and then uh, hold up in the town hall, as it's called, uh, until the night ends. And uh, the puppets, as they're called, the zombies, will uh, Try and break through your windows um, during the night, and how you survive or how long you survive during the night depends completely on what you do during the day. So, killing more puppets during the day will make the night, uh, I think it's shorter, um, or less puppets will spawn during the night. And uh, you have to get uh, resources to reinforce the windows and fix the windows that broke the previous night. So, you need to get planks, metal scraps, nuts and bolts, all that. And uh, you also need to find good weapons to kill them quickly. And uh, and it's actually pretty good. I'll explain uh, how I think all that plays out later. Um, the game, uh, the idea behind the game used to be that it was going to be a social deception kind of game, where it was going to be last person standing. Um, it, it was going to be like what's it called, Project Winter, um, where you deceive your friends and uh, trick them sabotage people uh, but you also have to you would also have to uh, work together to survive and uh, that that plan didn't work out because it was too ambitious I think um, you can still see the DNA of that in the uh, in the fact you can find like cyanide and you can poison food which uh, I, I think is actually pretty fun I like that they kept that stuff there um, just for the just for the fun of it, <laughs> so you can mess with your friends. Oh, and I forgot to mention that all the loot is randomly generated. All the world outside of the town hall, actually not even outside the town hall, the water rations are random. Um, but uh, the entire world is completely random, and you can use a custom seed. Uh, Bikini Body actually mentioned in the video uh, an idea I think would be pretty cool, is uh, everyone using the same seed, and uh, seeing how long everyone can survive using the same seed, you, you and your friends. I thought that was a really fun idea. Um, uh, but yeah, so I will explain uh, what I think of the RNG later. Uh, the way I said that makes it sound negative, but actually it's not that big a deal. Um, uh, but yeah, that's Last Farewell. Um, randomly generated uh, zombie resource gathering wave survival game. Now, it should be known that I didn't play any of it multiplayer, and I know that's um, a part of the game that they really want to push, um, so unfortunately I can't review that uh, perfectly. Um, it does make me upset because I feel like I'm not reviewing the game uh, to its full uh, extent. Um, because with my experience playing single player, I feel like playing in multiplayer would really change up the game a lot. 
the core game loop I was experiencing, I feel like would be entirely different playing in multiplayer. Um, like I said, I'll explain the core game loop later uh, and what I think of it. But um, I, I really feel like you're going to have an entirely different experience playing in multiplayer than single player. Um, that's not to say your single player experience will be bad, because mine wasn't. <laughs> and, nor that your multiplayer experience will be bad. Um, I just can't review the multiplayer experience at all. So, uh, that is the idea behind the game. Uh, so, what do I think about it? Well, let's start with the core game loop. So, this is how the game usually goes. As soon as the day starts, you go right outside and you look for items. Uh, the world is going to be randomly generated, so you have no idea where anything useful is unless you have experience with what kind of buildings have what kind of items. And they're not vastly different, um, it's just that some buildings have more of one resource than, and another kind of building has more of a different kind of resource. Um, but you go out, you find items, uh, you find bolts and nails, planks, uh, food, metal scraps, and, uh, oh, and barbed wire too, lock picks. Uh, you can find lockpicks and unlock uh, doors, which have even more val valuable items in them. By the way, don't skip out on those. They are really useful. Um, and then you come back before night. Uh, there's a timer at the top. Uh, if you don't come back before night, you'll die. Uh, so you come back before night. I would recommend uh, coming back a little before the time. Don't uh, come right at the last second. Because you're going to want to have time to uh, sort all the items you gathered into your vault or uh, craft stuff or use the items on your windows because the night really does start the second the timer goes off. The second timer goes off, there are going to be puppets banging on your windows. So you're going to want to be ready. You're going to want, you, even if you don't have your hotbar um, sorted, that can legitimately mean life or death <laughs> because it it is slow to move stuff in and out of your hotbar um, and you need to make sure that you have all the items you need during the night like bandages and weapons with enough durability um so yeah you need to leave yourself time time is very very crucial in this game uh, it may not seem uh, like a huge deal at first like uh, the timer isn't totally intimidating but then um the second you have to uh, switch out another plank from your inventory to your hotbar while being swarmed by ten puppets. Um, you'll you'll know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll know how important it is. Um, uh, and so, over over the course of multiple nights, the nights will get longer. I think uh, the nights will get harder. There will be more puppets that spawn, and you'll have to find more resources during the day. Um, They'll break down more of your windows, you'll need to get more resources to repair them, and you'll have to move out further and further from your town hall to find more resources, because you found all the ones close to your town hall. And so, it, that that actually sort of gives you less time to find resources during the day, which is fine, actually. Um, uh, that that's, that's actually the whole core game loop, I guess, so um, I'm going to explain what I think about it. Um, what do I think about it? I think it's great. I thought it was really fun. Um, I feel like the people who gave negative reviews on Steam about um, the amount of content in the game or um, how easy it was <laughs> in the first nights, how boring it was, did not understand the game. Uh, the idea of the game is to go as long as you can. When you give a negative review after playing 20 minutes of it, or even, actually, no, that's 15 minutes or 10 minutes, Y you are not qualified to review the game. You have not played the game. Um, you have to play at least a few nights to understand it. The idea behind the game is that you learn more, you get better, and you survive longer uh, over the course of multiple runs. Um, for reference, uh, here are the notes that I wrote uh, for this review while playing. On the fourth night, I said, it is physically impossible to go past three nights, or on the fourth run, I said that. I I remember writing that, I legitimately thought that. I thought it was physically impossible to get past three nights. And then the sixth run, two runs after that, I went past night 10. 
I had learned so much in just a couple runs, and I understood the game after that fourth night or that fourth run. I promise you, the game will beat you up like it beat me up <laughs> in the first few nights, and uh, it's gonna be just as uh, hard to understand. Um, and once I once it clicked in my head, once I realized what it was all about, um, all about finding resources as quickly as possible, learning where the good stuff is. Uh, learning all the mechanics, all the different kinds of buildings. Once I stopped fumbling around going random places because I was just exploring, once I sort of got on my feet, really, it really does click. It's instant. You understand exactly what you're supposed to do. You understand where you should be going. You understand what you should be grabbing, what you shouldn't. Um, and it all instantly becomes much faster and much easier well not necessarily even easier it does for the first few nights um but um it, it still it still poses a challenge but you're you're getting better and better and that's the point you're getting better and better you're surviving longer and longer and it actually reminded me of devil daggers um if you know what that game is you get better and better you survive longer and longer and you see more varieties of devils that you throw daggers at um uh, the whole idea behind that game is uh, you keep playing it more, you learn more about the game, you get better and better at it, and you survive longer. Um, that game takes it uh, to a different level where it's uh, every single second counts, it's not about uh, waves, nights. Um, uh, and obviously this game is no Devil Daggers, <laughs> nothing can be Devil Daggers. Um, but I really, really enjoyed that core game loop that Last for Will had. I do wish, like Devil Daggers, there was a larger variety of different kinds of puppets that maybe spawned uh, during later nights. Um, like maybe it starts out as just the normal puppets you have, but on night three, some, uh, some crazier kind of puppet, a stronger one pops up uh, rarely. And then by night 10, there's like four different kinds of puppets or five. And uh, it, it it would provide more. Uh, it would make later nights more fun. Cause as it is right now, it's um, instead of making the puppets more difficult to fight, they just throw more puppets at you, and um, that can be fun for a little bit. Um, because it does. Um, it, that that means it's still important in the later nights to get nuts and bolts, planks, and metal scraps to barricade your windows and reinforce them. Um, and that's good. That, by the way, entirely determines whether you'll survive during the night, is whether your windows are barricaded. Um, but that sort of uh, gets boring. It gets tiresome after... Um, when you get to around night 8 or 9, um, which usually isn't a big deal because I die around night 10 or night 11. Um, I think last time I died night 11. Uh, and you know what? That core game loop, um, it didn't make the lack of uh, resources to find. Uh, bothersome at all. I I actually appreciated that I knew exactly what every single item in the game was. Um, I guess except for the Schrodinger item, I haven't found that yet. Um, <laughs> that's a secret achievement item. Um, uh, I liked that I gained a sort of mastery or expertise around the game. I knew what everything did. Um, that's not to say I don't want more items, because I would like more items to find um but the core game loop that i played did not make it a big deal um i grew i grew used to the fast-paced nature of it uh all of the looting i did was really snappy i had to not think about what i was picking up that much uh if i wanted enough time to actually find enough useful items to survive during the night and so I appreciate that the most I had to stop and think about what I was putting in my backpack is uh, when my backpack was full. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention that the RNG, uh, the randomly generated loot, it does not determine your success. Um, you can be completely successful with the worst world seed. Um, <laughs> okay, well, maybe maybe it's possible to get all parks <laughs> eventually, um, but... Um, once you learn what buildings have what loot, or what buildings have the best loot, really, 
um, you know what buildings to completely run by, not even touch. Uh, like the parks, don't even touch the parks. I don't think there's anything useful that spawns in there. Um, <laughs> and the gas stations aren't good either. Uh, but uh, yeah, once you learn exactly where you want to go, uh, exactly what rooms have what items. Uh, don't ever use your lockpick on a bathroom lock door. <laughs> um, use your lockpick on these doors, yeah. The RNG kind of becomes a non-issue. Uh, it's just not even in your brain. L like, you, you never feel like the RNG killed you. Um, you can feel like you didn't find enough items. Um, uh, I often felt like I didn't find enough nuts and bolts. Um, but I, uh, I suggest that they look into the drop rate of that, uh, uh, I think it should just drop more, or everything else in the game should drop less, maybe. Because, uh, my vault was consistently stuffed full of everything except nuts and bolts. Like, I had more bandages than I knew what to do with, more machetes than I knew what to do with, even, um, metal scraps and planks. Uh, but no nuts and bolts to actually use those metal scraps and planks to reinforce my windows. So, uh... Actually, yeah, I think I think everything else in the game should drop less because I still have to go looking everywhere. I have to frantically search through all these buildings and I, f I still find loads and loads of loot by doing that, but not a lot of nuts and bolts. And so I again, I I find a lot of machetes, which are which are supposed to be like the strongest weapon you can find. Um, uh, emphasis on find because you can craft a stronger weapon, I think, I think. The plank with nails in it is better, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I was I was stocked full on machetes, but and bandages and uh, drinks, but no uh, no nuts and bolts, and that's what killed me. So um, yeah, that's what I think. Um, there, I really don't think there are all that many problems with the with the game at all. The game isn't uh, buggy to the point where it's unplayable. It's actually not even all that buggy. Um, there are some pretty big bugs, uh, like uh, the <laughs> the pathfinding broke when I stood on these hedges, and uh, I could just uh, pick them off one by one. Um, <laughs> um, and they get stuck in walls sometimes, but it's early access. Who cares? Um, that's uh, that's where I want to get to my next point, though. Um, the game, I think, costs too much. In its current state. I don't think it's worth $18. Uh, you remember Devil Daggers that I mentioned earlier? That game is amazing and it has more content and the core game would lose more refined and it's $5. Um, I can understand why Last for Well costs more. Um, it has more individual or uh, it has more assets in it. Um, it has more textures and models, more high res stuff, um, and it's a it's a small indie team. You know that they they need a they need a good startup. Not all of them are a YouTuber, <laughs> um, but the game really is not worth eighteen dollars. Um, luckily, it actually went on sale for around six dollars, I think, in the last sale. So if everything I said about this game interested you, um, you should look at it during a sale. I think uh, $6 is what it <laughs> is around what it should be worth. Um, I think $10 maximum. Uh, but $18, no, I don't. I paid $18 and I don't think it was worth it. <laughs> I think if in the future they add much more buildings to loot, much more loot, much more uh, variety in the enemies, and I mean much. Like, a lot more enemies, um, and variety in the loot and everything. And maybe even some more game modes, uh, online matchmaking. Um, then I can see it being worth $20. But, in its current state, I, I would not recommend buying this game, uh, until it goes on sale. Um, I would not be able to convince my friends at all to try the multiplayer with me. Um, for $20 if the game is so incomplete. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I wanted to say. I still really love the idea behind the game. I really want it to succeed, and I want it to have a lot of content. I want it to be worth $20. Um, I will probably still be active in, in their Discord server. I want to see where they go. Um, 
I've already reported a bunch of bugs there. Um, oh, I, w I should mention, actually, the team behind the game is really nice. They all seem like they really care about the game. Um, after I, uh, I reported a bunch of bugs, uh, one of the developers uh, actually DM'd me thanking me for reporting all those bugs. Uh, it, it really it made me happy to see the kind of people behind the game. Really, uh, they're really nice people and they really care about the game. And so I, I really hope they do well. I, I wish them the best. And uh, I'm actually glad I paid $18 because I want to support them. But yeah, I uh, I think this project is worth uh, watching. I think it's worth keeping track of. I, I don't know if it's worth purchasing for $18 yet. It's definitely worth purchasing for $6 if you like what I what I talked about. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I really like where the game is going. Reading messages on the Discord server... Um, it, it seems like they have the right idea about what kind of uh, content they want to add. Uh, they, they really appreciate your feedback and suggestions, by the way. So I would, I would recommend if you, if you buy this game, tell them what you think. Um, and uh, they, they really do seem like they, uh, they want to add a lot of content into the game and they want to make it good. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I said everything I needed to say. Um, <laughs> I, uh, it's funny, I planned to make this all multiple sections, but I kind of just kept talking. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, I think, I think I really did cover everything, and I think I've, uh, said enough about everything the game has to offer, um, for you to make your own judgment on it. Um, because I don't feel like there are the other reviews on Steam really do that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's everything. Um, the next section of the video is going to be a bunch of uh, tips and tricks. Uh, if you uh, uh, want your first four nights to be a little easier than mine were. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope I informed your decision a little more. <laughs> See ya. Okay, tips and tricks. Uh, the first one is in the menu, actually crafting recipes you are going to want to know these because um well while there is a crafting recipe menu in crafting benches uh, it's good to uh memorize these beforehand these ones aren't all that useful and you have to unlock them by getting an achievement by killing 10 of these or by killing 10 puppets with this you get uh this recipe by killing 10 puppets with a stick you get this recipe but they're actually not all that good um as long as you have barbed wire uh the barbed wire with a plank is just as good as a machete. Um, well, I don't know if it's just as good. It, there might be a slight difference in like the um, the combat speed or or the amount of energy it takes to swing them. I don't know, but I that these are really really good. Uh, they're they're not hard to make at all. You can find barbed wire. You can find a plank really easily. Um, so yeah. You're going to want to have those as soon as possible. And, uh, sticks are only useful if you want to start a fire. And, um, that is useful if, uh, you have friends to watch the fire. Um, I, I would imagine I have played it, uh, with friends, but, um, I've never ever found the time to actually bother with a fire. Um, but yeah, that's that's really the only use for sticks outside of the very beginning when you need a basic weapon. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's enough menu. Okay. The second we drop in, what we should do is, well, first, for your first game, you should explore the town hall, not worry about how much time you're taking, and uh, just explore. Uh, the amount of water in this collector is random, but if you're playing solo, you're going to get less than if you're playing with other people. You don't have to close this behind you, they won't go in. I got a really good spawn, I'm right next to a parking lot. The car trunks give really good loot. Um, machete takes two hits always to kill. Um, what did I get? Jar with pills. You can combine two jars with pills to create one of any other kind of jar of pills. So steroids or antibiotics or cyanide. 
bolts and nails are used to um, repair windows and upgrade them with metal scrap. Uh, I just got a jar of cyanide. They're useless in single player. Uh, they're used for the fun multiplayer stuff. Matches are only used to use to light the campfire. Um, at first, it's going to seem like your inventory is just useless. Um, I'm actually not sure why I'm grabbing a bunch of sticks. I don't use a campfire. Um, you will find a... Um, I should have grabbed that. You will find a backpack eventually. Uh, the backpack will permanently increase your inventory space. And don't worry about getting lost, by the way. You have a compass at the top. You can see the home icon up there. And I don't actually want to check this area. Uh, the cars are useful, but the gas station's completely useless. Don't even touch them. Oh, oh and the puppets can open doors. <laughs> so uh, don't don't rely on them. The more puppets you kill during the day, I think I said this during my review, but the easier the night will be. Um, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but um, Bikini Body himself said it made a difference. So, <laughs> uh, Beaver Burger is going to have a lot of food. He said it in his video, but this door, if you lockpick it, there's going to be a lot of food inside. And the lockpicking works just like Skyrim. I got a really lucky <laughs> lockpick there. I, just, I didn't have to move it at all. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of raw meat, there's water, um, yeah, there's, yeah, <laughs> if you're ever short on food, just remember this area. Lockpicking is actually pretty easy, I think, um, lockpicks are very plentiful, um, bathrooms are almost always useless, this one had a potato though. Um... Parks are almost always useless, I think. You're gonna want to play this game with sound, by the way. Uh, you, you don't want to get stuck up on. <laughs> like I almost just did while I was talking. Okay. These buildings have okay loot. The, uh, the townhomes. Uh, they're gonna have more necessities, the basics. Dumpsters are what usually have, uh, I feel like dumpsters have good stuff. They're, they're gonna be the more, what, what you would expect in a dumpster, you know? Like, metal scrap and lockpicks. Bolts and nails sometimes. I'm actually surprised I haven't come across a different kind of building that is useful. That might be what I'm thinking of. These ones are more useful. They have much better stuff. Oh, like bandages. There's one. That's very useful. I'm gonna... It doesn't matter. But, uh... Bandages heal you and they stop bleeding. These rooms are almost... The, the, honestly, I'm starting to think they're not worth even touching. Um... Yeah, so these are slightly better than the townhomes. I'm still looking for a good building, though. These ones, these gray brick buildings, I think are supposed to have more uh, gear stuff, like machetes and barbed wire and stuff. Um, but I'm not actually sure. I don't, from my experience, I'm not sure. Okay. These buildings are the best. I think. <laughs> you can punch these. Free money. Oh, I mean not free money. Free food. They dropped a lot of soda. I did not know they dropped more than one. That's awesome. Uh, it's okay. That, that one's useless. There's a chance that this one will be uh, locked. And you can lock pick it and there's really good stuff inside. Um, but that probably means there's another room. This one? Yes. There's another room that is locked. And the lock picking in this game is really specific. You have to get it just right. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be... I'm getting bad luck with this one. 
I'm getting really bad luck with this one. That sucks. Um, yeah, that's a shame. But there's usually really, really good stuff behind locked doors, unless that locked door is a bathroom. And you only know which locked doors are bathrooms um, uh, with experience. I've never found anything useful in parks. I think I've mentioned that already. Don't even touch them. <laughs> And I'm actually going against my advice that I mentioned in the video already, which is give yourself time when you get home. Um, <laughs> I just uh, wanted to show more stuff. And I actually might... Am I gonna die? <laughs> because I did that? It's way further away than I thought it was. Okay. Reinforcing your windows is extremely important. You have to make sure that they are at least barricaded. And you can only do that with planks, bolts, and nails. And you use... Where is it? There it is. Metal scrap to upgrade it. I'm upgrading this. They might get through the first night. Or this window, even though I barricaded it. I think in, yeah, that's awesome, okay. So, um, in later nights, the uh, the metal barricade is essential, I think. Um, I'm gonna, I always keep one um, weapon and one barricade. They're still breaking that window. Really? Seriously? <laughs> okay, well, I don't think this water collector regenerates at all, um, so it, it's just to get you started, you need to find another water source. Okay, I, I'm actually, I think that might be a bug, because it definitely would have broken by now. Uh, you can right click, and it'll block all damage if you have a weapon. Um... I don't use that because I'm bad, um, but <laughs> I, I just always forget about it. I should probably use it more often. It's still, yeah, <laughs> that's a bug. I'll report that. Okay. Um, oh, if I had just went right from my house. Okay. Well. Uh, oh, never mind. This is the. This is the not amazing. One. That's the amazing one with the barred windows. You have to keep watch of your weapon's durability. If it's about to go down, and uh, or if it's about to run out, and you have a knight upcoming, then I would recommend putting two weapons in your hotbar, uh, so that you can easily quickly replace it so you don't die. Um, ooh. I think... Leaving the lockpick resets its durability, <laughs> so you can keep trying, and it won't break. Yeah, it definitely would have broken by now. Oh, I got it! Ah. This is a hard lockpick. Ah, okay, it broke. That's okay. I had a feeling about that one too. Luckily, lockpicks are pretty easy to find, I think. I'm not sure why everyone has lockpicks in this world, but, um... That's okay. That's okay. Oh, I found a backpack. Okay, this is the difference a backpack makes. It's honestly essential. There we go. Big and meaty. Oh, I found another lockpick. Um, I wanted to find other kinds of pills. I probably just missed them. You can't use two backpacks, by the way. You can only upgrade once. Um, I wanted to find other pills. There's antibiotics, 
uh, which can remove infection, uh, which you can sometimes get if you get hit. And I think you'll die during the night, or you have a chance to die during the night if you don't use antibiotics. I found another machete, that's awesome. Um, okay, yeah. I was, there are some recipes you have to use the workbench at home to craft. Um, but yeah. Ooh. There we go. Um, I think... Yeah, the machete gets stuck on things. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to avoid that. I think this is the best way to do that. Um, I think it's because the animation... Um, it... The, the, the range of damage you do... The attack range is... <laughs> your blood circle is... Uh, it's dependent on the physical location of your sword in the world. Um, so the animation de uh, determines that. Um, the plank has a different animation set. And so that might... Um, yeah, see, it swings sideways. Um, oh, wait. I didn't even notice. That takes durability if you hit walls. Well, that's a good tip. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. So you can notice the machete always swings right to left. And so you can um, actually, if you're like standing on an object like this, um, you can. Uh, I heard a puppet, I thought. Um, if the puppet is right there, you can swing like this and it'll hit it but you can't hit it like this. So it's, um, it's really interesting. I, oh, it's chasing me. I can probably show it now. Yep, there it is. It was harder to hit it, um, like that. It makes more of a difference. It's, it's still going. Um, it makes more of a difference if you're standing on, like, I shouldn't close this. Actually, you, I would recommend not closing this um, when you go outside, because then it's, uh, it takes longer to get in. Um, but yeah, that makes more of a difference if you're standing on something taller than the bench, like a hedge. Um, uh, by the way, you're kind of cheating if you stand on these hedges, because their pathfinding kind of breaks in this current version. <laughs> um, but... But yeah, uh, swinging right, uh, a little to the right of an enemy that's below you with the machete, that'll do it. I almost forgot one more tip. Uh, you can stack things in the vault infinitely. Uh, they aren't, like, see how there's seven planks here? If I right-click it and bring it to the other side of my inventory quickly, it separates into stacks. Um, but they don't stack in the vault. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really awesome. I, I, I don't think that's a bug, uh, but that is very, very nice. Oh, also, don't skip out on the things that, uh, give you abilities. Like, don't save them for later. <laughs> you will find a lot of them. Like, energy drinks. As, I mean, as long as you're punching, uh, vending machines to get stuff, you're, you're never gonna run out of these. So, you, you can, you're safe to use these. Don't, don't, don't worry about wasting them. Um, I'm not sure how long they last, but you've probably noticed I, uh, I got faster. Check that out. Um. Yeah. I think that's everything I want to say. You can ask me questions if you want. Um. I, I think I know everything about this game except where the Schrodinger achievement item spawns. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Ooh, I didn't know that. You can jump and then vault. That's fun. <laughs> can I do that here? No, I can't vault in there. Well, uh, but yeah, I, I hope I helped you guys uh, with my review slash chips and tricks video. <laughs> um, I'll see you later. Bye.